Thank you all for being here. I'm really excited to, uh, to be able to tell you a little bit about Enzvant. Uh, I'm Rochelle Jacques, uh, CEO. And um, you know, we're working on, uh, at Enzvant, uh, transformative therapies for um, uh, those patients with rare diseases. And in particular, looking, um, you know, right now we're working on uh, pediatric. Um, our focus has been in tissue-based therapies, but we're also looking for new things for our pipeline, both in terms of tissue-based and in uh, cell-based therapies. So I'm excited to tell you a little bit about what we're about and uh, what we've been up to. Most importantly, on Friday, we did uh, receive an FDA approval for our lead therapy. It is the third uh, RMAT that has been approved now, so hot off the presses. and. Um, Really excited to be able to tell you about that in particular because this therapy, Rhythymic, is for children um, with congenital athymia. So it is a novel, uh, one time tissue based therapy, and it is uh, indicated for uh, congenital uh, or immune reconstitution and congenital athymia in children. Uh, and that means they're born without a thymus, and without a thymus, of course, they aren't making functional T cells. Without that, they have um, you know, severe immunodeficiency and immune dysregulation, and unfortunately, with supportive care only, um, these children will all die by um, the age of two or, or three. So that's a bit of really where uh, the story starts, and whoop, I wanna share with you this visual because to me this tells it all. Um, I talk about uh, the children with congenital athymia with, with supportive care only, and I, I wanna orient you to this Kaplan-Meier survival curve. So what you're looking at here, of course, uh, for a study population is at, at one up at the top of the chart, that means 100% of that population survived. And then as the, the um, uh, children uh, die, of course, that, that line comes down. And what you can see here is a line that's almost vertical. This is a natural history population. And 94% uh, of those children uh, had passed by the age of two and 100% before their third birthday. And on the path there, it is a, a brutal medical journey. On average, uh, these children are spending 150 days a year in the hospital. Um, so uh, really, um, really traumatic experience for the family and, and significant uh, burden of disease here. Now, um, if you look across the other, the other line closer to the top of the chart, um, this, is, this is why we've been um, working for so long in this at Enzivant. That is the clinical data that was part of our um, BLA submission for Rhythymic. That is uh, uh, survival uh, based on 10 clinical studies across 105 patients. Now this is a patient population that has an incidence of 17 to 24 children per year in the US. And what that means here then is roughly five years of the annual incidence represented in these studies. And remarkably, um, we have 797 patient years of data. And I would just, you know, dare say a, a bit of a unicorn in terms of long-term survival. If you look at the x-axis, what you can see is those are not months across, across the bottom. Those are years. So our long-term follow-up at time of approval was up to 25 and a half years, um, which is, uh, you can imagine, uh, answering questions around durability. Certainly uh, a question that um, we'll keep on answering in this space. So um, this is, uh, I think, a very, very clear clinical story. Uh, but <laughs> I want to tell you a little bit about the rest of the story because um, not everything was quite as easy as the clinical story. The reason we, of course, um, you know, push through that is because these children um, don't have other options and, and there is something we really felt that we could do here. So the rest of the story is, uh, surprise, it's about CMC. <laughs> and, uh, and we um, had some, some setbacks, I would say, in CMC. And uh, we had uh, filed our BLA in uh, April of 2019, actually, rolling submission. 
we went through a priority review. We went fully through the review process, very engaged with the agency, and on our PDUFA day, we received a complete response letter, not an approval. Uh, and so when we looked at that complete response letter, uh, it was all CMC related. Everything in there was about CMC. And, uh, you know, I, I will tell you that, you know, we think about all the company setbacks that, uh, that you have at that moment. Um, for us, we also had a pretty emotional setback because, you know, you saw the Kaplan-Meier survival curve. Um, these, these families are relying on us, and we had, you know, quite frankly, felt like we had let them down. So our goal was to move as quickly as possible uh, to bring this uh, to an, an approval, ultimately. And we had two big things that were challenges for us that might be a little bit unique. The first is that we're working in tissue-based therapies. And tissue-based therapies, you know, if we think about regenerative medicines, they're kind of a niche in the whole pharma world. Now, tissue-based therapies are a niche within the niche, and so we're really inventing a lot as we go. So when we look at a, a set of questions, uh, you know, on the CMC front, there's no easy answer for us there. We have to invent a lot of the, the, the ways that we would approach um, these difficult questions. And um, so that was a, a major challenge for us. And the other major challenge was that we were working with a clinical academic manufacturing site and trying to upgrade that to a commercial GMP manufacturing facility. And for those of you who have done it or have tried it or have thought about it, you will understand that is a, a, a tall order. Uh, to make that transition. So those two, two things were really challenges in front of us that were a, a little bit different from what some other programs might face. And I would say, you know, Friday's approval was a testament to the capabilities that we built to address those things and, um, and the work that we did to bring it to that, to that point. Of course, it's not, you know, a CMC story, especially when it comes to, um, you know, the BLA submissions and, and review processes. It's not like the CMC team is doing this alone. Uh, the, the regulatory team is um, really, and in our case, the steady hand, uh, the, the real kind of Sherpa that brings us through this entire process. And so our regulatory team is, is uh, fantastic and guided us through every step of this to bring it to uh, fruition. Uh, I think one of the things that we all thought about is when we were coming into the pandemic is the exact time that we started to execute on um, the uh, main issues in the complete response letter. And so we're trying to do all of this uh, remotely, and we were really worried, as, as many of you might be, we were really worried about, will the agency even have time for us? You know, there is a lot going on. Will they have time for us? Well, you know, what about an inspection? And what about um, answering questions? And how about if we work with, with urgency and submit, can they review it in time? We had, um, again, going back to our regulatory team and the cap capabilities there, I think um, what gave us a lot of confidence, despite those questions, is that we had these designations that really supported a priority seat at the table. So we had RMAT designation, breakthrough therapy, a rare pediatric disease, as well as orphan drug disease. So a lot, I would say, uh, moving in our, in our direction there. And, and really meant for us that the agency was very um, interactive still, very responsive, and uh, clearly uh, prioritizing the review. So, uh, you know, excellent work by our regulatory team here to help us bring that to the finish line. The other, I think, interesting thing, and I think we'll, we'll start to see this more and more uh, discussed in these rooms, is as you start to come into a phase closer to commercialization with one-time therapies where we have a really um, cent center of excellence, a deep center of excellence model, and sometimes a very narrow uh, set of centers of excellence, there, there's a reality there that we're transitioning from moving with, you know, from this academia R&D kind of relationship and partnering to um, suddenly uh, working with them much differently. And, uh, you know, we're talking about orchestrating a supply chain across a, an institution. And, and we're talking about trying to create a patient experience 
across an institution where we are as the, as the manufacturer, as the sponsor, having to integrate five, six, seven departments across an institution in ways that they've never done before. And we have to do that effectively. And, and what I'll just say is, you know, if, if you haven't made it to that part of, of you know, your story or your program, um, you know, allow a lot of time. <laughs> Because this, uh, this is something that uh, it takes time. There are ways of working. We're asking folks to do things differently, um, integrate in different ways. There's a lot of influence that's necessary, a lot of learning and listening, because there's just a totally different context for working inside those, those um, institutions. And, and it serves them well on every other front, but suddenly in this front, you know, we, we're looking for something different. And so being that integrator from the outside is, is a real and new challenge for us. And we need, to, we need to find a way to do that well. And so I look forward to, you know, being to sh able to share more and more experiences on that front. Of course, we um, don't do any of this alone, and uh, I have a great team. My leadership team uh, here has been uh, with me through this process uh, for quite some time. We were together when we received the complete response letter in 2019, and we are still together now. Um, and uh, have have you know worked to bring things to this point. And I, um, you know, what I really love about this team is there's, you know, there's nothing specific that we've all done that says, oh, magically we're equipped with the, all the answers for working on a no novel tissue-based therapy um, in a very new space with different kinds of data and partnering with academia. All of that's new, but this team has a breadth of experience that is from outside the industry, inside the industry, across therapeutic areas, from tiny startups to large pharma, everything in between. Um, Spin-offs, being acquired, acquiring, uh, multiple rare disease launches, uh, ultra-rare disease, uh, oncology launches, and all of that is just forming a toolbox for us. It, it forms a toolbox for us to be able to draw from as we're building that future and really driving breakthrough therapies and regenerative medicines. So a uh, big thanks to this team for um, to driving to this point, and we're really looking forward to, to what's next. Uh, finally, it seems a little bit odd to talk about location, I have to admit. Uh, it seems not really that necessary, but I will share with you, we do have about half of our employees in uh, Durham, North Carolina, and about half in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Uh, we do also have other folks um, around the world, and uh, we are um, working on um, uh, in, in the family of uh, Sumitomo Dynipon Pharma, uh, and our wholly owned subsidiary. They have um, a, a wonderful regenerative medicine group, and uh, you know, we're the, the debut in terms of commercialization, but uh, they, they have a very strong strategic interest in the space as well, so wonderful to be part of that family. So, um, you know, we are uh, very proud, of course, of uh, Rithymic and, uh, you know, getting to this point because what it means is next, you know, we can, we can start to see some of these children uh, get treated and we're, we're just really happy to be part of that and uh, to be able to bring that, bring that forward in, in such an important space. Um, you know, I think we've built some great capabilities along the way, uh, especially in the CMC, resolving a, a CRL very quickly. I know that's a lot of acronyms, but uh, <laughs> resolving that, those challenges quickly, um, building that regulatory capability, and also really learning in this area of uh, partnering in this new world with academia. So um, with that, I'm looking forward to bringing that to, to um, additional programs and, and therapies in the future. And uh, I guess we take questions in the hall, is that right? <laughs> Thank you, everybody.